Well, hello there. Recently, I bought these things. They are technical drawing pens made by the Chinese. And recently, I've been pretty impressed with the quality that the Chinese have been making when it comes to certain pens. Like I bought this Jinhao X750. Oh, and this thing is an amazing looking feeling pen. Full metal construction. Look at that beautiful piston converter. It feels really, really well built. You could comfortably stand on this pen and nothing bad would happen. It's built like a tank and it only cost $5. But these technical drawing pens, these cost $4. So let's open one up, see what's inside. We have an instruction manual which tells you everything you need to know in Chinese. Oh look, you have all the uh, instructions to refill it as well. Got compass holding tools that you can also purchase. Shows you how to rinse, rinse it out. Shows you how to remove the tip because there's, uh, oh, there's a tool at the base here for removing the tip of the pen. It's all very nice. I have used technical pens before so I'm I'm not going to read this out to you because I'm going to find it a bit boring. Just pause the video and you can read it if you like. One in English and one in Chinese. Now the first time I looked at these pens, I thought to myself, man, these things feel really, really cheap. But now on closer inspection, I have come to the conclusion that they are really, really cheap. They are cheap and nasty. Here's the uh, refillable ink cartridge. This is the tip of the pen. This is the 0.4 millimeter one. I don't know if you can see that, but the tip of the pen, it's not perfectly in line with the actual pen. It's slightly off to a strange angle. In fact, if I grab the tip of the pen, you know, there's a slight amount of wobble there. That might just be because the tip of the pen is actually incredibly long. Now let's have a look at the 0.3 millimeter one. The finishing touches on the 0.3 millimeter one is a bit to be desired. Look, there's this little, what's that? That's not meant to be there, I don't think. Let's do a bit of a further disassembly. If we can take the nib out itself and you can see the little shaker weight in there, which moves the uh, cleansing wire up and down. Okay, one thing I've already noticed about the 0.3mm one is that the tiny cleansing wire doesn't protrude out the end of the nib at all. So we'll see how that performs. It's already not a particularly good sign, I'm afraid. So let's put some ink in these things and then we can see how they perform. Do you want to hold a pen? Want to be helpful? Okay. Thank you, thank you. What about this one? Do you want to hold this one? And the phone is ringing. Hello? What's that? Oh, you're saying that I shouldn't put the ink in before I do a careful examination of the quality of the pens. Okay, well that makes sense. So let's really study these pens quality in there is somewhat so-so. Now let's use the little tool on the end here to remove the nib. Oh, that feels a bit janky. It felt like I was crunching something. Hmm. Because I noticed something odd. I noticed that the cleansing wire weight on the 0.3 is a lot heavier than the one in the 0.4. So let's pull the nib apart nice and careful and we can have a look at what's in here. I don't know if you can see that, but the inside of the weight is actually hollow. Let's have a look at the 0.3 millimeter one. See, that's not hollow. That actually has something in it. Put that back before I break something, like the cleansing wire, for example. So that is some pretty bad quality control there. They failed to put a weight inside the little tube. It's pretty light. Sometimes the cleansing wire just kind of sticks. Because of that, you've got to shake it like five times as hard. 
although I could fix it just by dropping a bit of lead solder into the end of that tube. These pens were pretty cheap, they were uh, $4 each. The quality is so low, I almost get the feeling that I paid too much for them. Grab the end of the nib here. With my disgustingly long fingernails, I can make slight, it's kind of wobbly, you know. Now, just so we have a point of reference for quality, I have here a 0 0.5 rotary isograph. Good old German engineering. Feels very smooth. The shaker weight works well. Nice, generous ink cartridge. And something I really want to draw attention to is the cap. So if you look inside the cap of the rotary isograph pen, you can see there's a tiny little rubber gasket thing for the end of the nib. That little rubber gasket will seal up the end of the nib nice and tight so ink doesn't flow everywhere even when the cap is on. But what is in the Chinese hero pen cap? Absolutely nothing. In fact you can quite easily pull one of these caps apart. So you can remove the uh, pocket clip which is a nice touch. Now we can see that there's nothing inside the cap at all. It's completely empty. So unless you store these pens in an upright position, ink might just drip all over the place. So now we're going to put some ink in these things and actually see how they feel. Oh man, the 0.3mm one's really wobbly. That is some serious wobble. I'm not trying particularly hard to make it wobble either. Even if I pick a really, really fine nib, which is a rotaring. It's not gonna wobble on me. No wobbling, no wobbling. Now we are actually gonna put some ink in these things. How exciting. So I'm gonna use some old rotaring ink. Okay, let's get this 0.3 millimeter one working. Mm. The shake. Oh, how interesting. After shaking this pen around for a bit, I can actually see ink filling up in here, in this clear plastic section. So you can see the difference here. This one's got ink in it, and this one does not have ink in it. Oh dear. Shaking it a bit, and uh, there is some ink leaking out all over the place. Well, that one seems to work. Let's try out this 0.4 millimeter one. You can see the ink slowly coming through into this plastic part. There we go. Come on, you can do it. Ink is starting to leak out the sides before it comes out of the nib. It's leaked out of the side of the pen before it even came out the end of the nib. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's a working. Now, oh, it's leaking so much. Where's my sacrificial tea towel? Here it is. Okay, should I do some drawing tests with these pens now? Let's see what these cheap, cheap things can do. Okay, so my first impression of the 0.3 millimeter one, it's very scratchy. Because you can't feel how scratchy it is, have a bit of a listen. Sounds marvelous, doesn't it? Like nails on a blackboard. Mm -mm. Now let's try this 0.4 millimeter one. Now the 0.4 millimeter one is still pretty scratchy. It's the level of smoothness which is kind of usable. Oh yeah, that's better. Rotoring. I'm going to I'm going to compare this 0.35 rotoring to the 0.4 Chinese Hero pen. Now that feels nice. What about a 0.25 rotoring pen? So now I've just compared the 0.4mm Hero technical pen to a 0.25 rotaring technical pen. And they are about at the same level of scratchiness. The level of scratchiness of the 0.3 Hero pen though, compared to the even smaller 0.25, it's like Night and day, this feels like five times scratchier. If, if 
you're super gentle with it, you can just manage. As soon as you put any pressure on the paper at all, it's just kind of there's an old saying that goes anyone can build a bridge that can stand but only an engineer can build a bridge that can only just stand and this is what the Chinese have done here for a dirt cheap price they have managed to make a technical pen just work without any extra quality at all to take away from their profits or whatever it's like on the path to quality and they found the spot where it can just manage to function and they decided let's not go any further so this you know technical pen does actually amaze me it amazes me that it works at all now the question is who these pens are actually for i think the ideal person for these pens is someone who already owns rotary isographs or maybe the Stadler Mars Matic 700 technical pens and you know they're a bit fussy and they have some complaints about them you know just buy some of these and you'll have no complaints about these at all they were four dollars each if you buy a single rotary isograph it'll cost you ten times as much but the quality of a rotary isograph is ten times higher if you do happen to buy one as your first technical pen uh, just keep in mind it's a very poor ambassador to the world of technical pens yes yeah, so i did try and do some drawing with these pens but um, while i was drawing i quickly adopted a simplistic and kind of careless line style because drawing with these pens was giving me no pleasure at all in fact it was quite displeasurable i could say while i was drawing i just thought to myself i can't wait until this drawing is over so I can stop drawing with these pens and maybe draw with something else. So I just ended up producing a rather ugly looking result, really. These pens are a bit of a waste of money. Okay, now, now I'm going. Goodbye. Okay.